the teachings of Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher, Dean of Students at Diaspora Yeshiva on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Chodesh Tov Mvarach, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the month of miracles. The Talmud tells us that just like the first redemption from Egypt was through plagues in the month of Nisan, so the final redemption of Mashiach will also take place in the month of Nisan, also through plagues, because the uh, roadmap of the final redemption, says the Zohar, is contained in the first redemption of Egypt. Plagues, redemption, Nisan, and the final redemption also through plagues, and also in the month of miracles. This morning we read in Pasha's Pinchas, that God asks us to bring a karban, a chatas l'ashem, a sin offering for God. A sin offering for God. And in the same pasuk, the Torah says, don't forget the, tar- the carbon tamid. Don't forget the carbon tamid, even though the Pasha discusses the t- carbon tamid before. But the Torah in by Midbar 28, Pasuk 15, says that every Rosh Chodesh, this was the reading this morning, and every Rosh Chodesh, to bring a carbon, a sin offering for God, and also to bring the carbon tamid. Why mix it in with the special sin offering of Rosh Chodesh? How do we bring a sin offering for God? What does God need a sin offering for? And why connect it to the carbon tamid? Carbon tamid is brought every day. We know that, day in and day out. And the uh, sin offering of Rosh Chodesh is only brought once a month. Why connect them? The Talmud tells us that the carbon tamid is klal godl batorah. A major principle of the Torah is the carbon tamid. We haven't had a carbon tamid for close to 2,000 years. And we know the Torah is God's GPS, God's personal system for the year 2020. So how can the Talmud tell us that the carbon Talmud is a major principle of the Torah when we haven't had a carbon Talmud for centuries, almost 2,000 years? And why keep reading about it? Why is Talmud a central theme of Judaism? The carbon Talmud is brought in the morning and the carbon Talmud is brought in the evening. What does the morning symbolize? Sunshine, good times. You bring your carbon to it. What does the evening symbolize? Coronavirus. The carbon to it is the ikra of Yahadut. It teaches that whether in good times, both Bokir, Shalom now, and Erev, God is always with us. He is there holding our hand. Tamid, always. Boker, good times, Erev, evening, times of what we're going through now. Akurish Baruch Hu is there holding our hand always. Always. And therefore, when he first appeared to Moshe Rabbeinu, he didn't appear in a peach tree or a cherry tree or a fig tree or even an avocado tree. He appeared in a thorn bush. Rashi says, why in a thorn bush? What's wrong with an apple tree? A thorns cut and they cause pain. They prick and they cause pain. Imo Onochi Betzara. God appeared in a thorn bush to teach Moshe that he suffers along with his people. Imo Onochi Betzara. I am with him in his suffering. So now that we're suffering, God is suffering with us. He suffers along with us. But why does he do that? Why is he causing himself anguish? You know, when a parent punishes a child, the parent says, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. So, Psalm 91 says that God suffers along with his people. And the the Talmud teaches that God is always with us in both care, good times, and bain or abayim in dark times as we are now in. But why does it say chatas l'ashem, a sin offering for God? 
Why does God need a sin offering for? Isn't that strange? So Rashi quotes the Gemara in Chulun, page 60. God tells the Jewish people, every Rosh Chodesh bring a kapara for me. God asks the Jewish people every month for an atonement, for a sin offering that I diminish the moon. So if God diminished the moon, he first created the sun and the moon with the same size, and then he diminished the moon. So if God diminished the moon, why is he asking us for an atonement? Let him ask the moon for atonement. What's it all about? And how does it tie into what's going on right now? The Ramban told us, during his debate with Pablo Cristiani, Disputation of Barcelona, that the Talmud consists of two sections, Halakha and Agada. Only the Halachic part of the Talmud must be taken literally. The Agada part, like we just said, Chulun, page 60, which Rashi quotes, that God diminished the moon, that is a metaphor. Let me God diminish the moon. It's a metaphor. Says Rav Salvechik, the Zohar tells us, that the Jewish people are compared to the moon. Therefore, we follow a lunar calendar. Our destiny is the moon. We are like the moon. The, the moon is surrounded in blackness. Totally darkness, blackness, representing all the suffering and sorrow the Jewish people go through. And it looks like we're about to disappear. The moon looks like it's swallowed up in darkness and blackness. But every month it comes back. That is the Jewish people. That is the power of Chodesh of Chidush. God gave us the power of the moon to rejuvenate us, to renew ourselves, despite being surrounded by blackness and all suffering and persecutions and Holocaust. Three years after the Holocaust, our people were destroyed, we come back and we rise like a phoenix from the ashes? How is that possible? Who comes back after 2,000 years? Nobody comes back after a Holocaust and after 2,000 years to rebuild this wonderful country, the start of the nation, the end of the entire world. Israel, that's the power of rejuvenation contained in the Nitzvah of Rosh Chodesh. We are the moon surrounded by blackness and darkness and looks like we're really totally wiped out and we keep coming back. We are the moon. It's a metaphor for us as a great Basavechik. Every month God says, the moon is us. God says, please forgive me, Kaviyocho, that I have to put you through this coronavirus and all the suffering. There is a plan. There is a plan. What is the plan? Beyond our understanding. So God says, please bring a kapara for me that I have to put you through this suffering. When I was a kid, there was a program called Father Knows Best. And the little kids couldn't understand what the father is doing. He looked like he was treating them cruelly. They couldn't understand. But when they grew up, they realize that father knows best. We are like little children. It's like trying to explain trigonometry or geometry to a three-year-old child. God says, somehow this is for your own good. But it's beyond our understanding. But father knows best. It's the tumid, the carbon tumid. It's a cloud god Torah. That whether it's good times, the chas v'sholem times, like now God is always with us, holding our hands. Whether in the morning, tender love, or whether now, tough love. It's all love. And God suffers along with us. And every Rosh Chodesh Kaviyochol, he asks us for a kapara, my dear children. You know, when a father or a parent spanks a child, he says, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. God is saying that. But somehow, this is what we need in order for the redemption to come. 
We know before a child is born, the, the labor pains of the mother is, the, 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 the more severe the labor pains are, the closer the moment of birth. The Zohar Kodesh says, before Mashiach comes, there will be Hevle Leidash or Mashiach. We are going through the birth pangs of Mashiach. And just like the mother, before she gives birth, the pain is most severe. The more severe the pain, these are labor pains that are going to give birth to the coming of the Mashiach very, very soon. We just have to hang in there and not to fall into despair. Hang in there, don't despair. Hang in there. The Rambam in Hilchas Tanit informs us that times of great distress and suffering, like we're now experiencing, are times for introspection. God wants us to reflect and think about how to become a better person. This coronavirus is telling us that there are two areas where we should improve ourselves. Number one, the value of quality family time. And number two, the pain of loneliness. This mandatory quarantine of family reminds us where our true source of strength lies. Sitting in our rooms, cut off from the rest of the world, forces us to undergo a process of self-examination. What values are truly important to us? Not our careers or financial success, but values of spirit, faith, and family. The coronavirus that has put millions of people into isolation reminds us that there are people who are always socially isolated 24-7 during normal times. Do we pay attention to those people who suffer from constant loneliness, who return to an empty apartment day after day? These lonely people have no family. Those who are home alone, waiting for someone to give them a friendly hello, do we hear their voice? Do we feel their pain? Perhaps this virus that forces us to become lonely is a wake-up call to remember all the lonely people. Loneliness can be painful, but it's also easy to alleviate with a friendly smile, a kind word, a cheerful greeting, or a phone call. If each of us remembers one lonely person and reaches out to that person by inviting them to a Shabbos meal, after this crisis is over, of course, it can make a huge contribution to light up one's life. As Debbie Boone famously sang, You light up my life, you give me hope to carry on. We have to give the lonely people hope. Perhaps the coronavirus and the loneliness that has been imposed on us gives us a taste of what loneliness really feels like. We miss our social encounters that we are accustomed to. This disease gives us a wonderful opportunity to lessen the pain of lonely people because we're all in this together. We're all in the same boat. We can feel each other's pain and making us more sensitive and more caring to those people that suffer from chronic loneliness in regular times as well. Perhaps that's God's game plan. This week's Pasha is Vayikra, and we know that the Pasha week, the Pasha of the week always speaks to current events. Vayikra means God calls out to each and every one of us. Reach out and touch one lonely person and bring a little joy and sunshine into their lonely lives. This is God's message to each and every one of us. In this week's Pasha of Ayikra, God calls everyone. Reach out. If not in person, a phone call, a friendly message, in the merit of this great mitzvah of making someone happy, the Vilna Gaon says that the purpose of the entire Torah, the purpose of the Tayag Mitzvot is to give joy and happiness to a fellow Jew. Should I repeat that? The Vilna Gaon says that the purpose of the entire Torah and all the 613 mitzvahs is to give joy and simcha to a fellow Jew. Why? Says Vilna Gaon, because when you give joy 
and happiness to a fellow Jew, you're giving joy and happiness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Wow. You make a Jew happy, God says you make me happy as well. Because all of us have a Tzelem Elohim, a Chelek Olahayim Imal. We all have a godly soul within us, every human being. So we make a person happy, we make God happy. And that's the purpose of all the mitzvot. In the merit of this great mitzvah, our prayers will be answered, and we will overcome this deadly disease in peace and in health. But what should we do in the meantime? The prophet states that in the dawn of the messianic era, Isaiah 26, 20, it's incredible. What the prophet said about 2,700 years ago in Isaiah is the prophet that speaks about the Messianic era. He states in 2620 that in the dawn of the Messianic era, God tells him, listen to this, quote, Go, my people, enter your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide for a while until the wrath and plague has passed. Isaiah 26, 20. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Chodesh Tov and Barach. Nisan, the month of miracles. Wonder of wonder. Miracles of miracles. God bless you. Stay healthy. Shabbat Shalom. And thank you. For more of Rabbi Sprecher's teachings, visit RabbiSprecher.com.